For the uninitiated, most of the recent Pokemon games have had a main gimmick that you could employ during battle. Sun and Moon had Z-moves, X and Y had Mega Evolution, and in Sword and Shield you could Dynamax, but in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet you can take advantage of the Terrastalization phenomenon. What is up friends and fans, Jake here, and after playing around with the feature myself during an early preview event, I'm pretty sure that this is going to end up being regarded as a favorite, if not the best, of this franchise's gimmicks. For one, from a competitive standpoint, each Pokemon on your team having a secret alternative type that they could switch to at a moment's notice adds a layer of strategic thinking that just wasn't present before. But all gimmicks have affected the meta, that's really not new. What puts terrestrialization over the top is how it infiltrates the entirety of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The mechanic is able to be used anywhere and at any time, unlike Dynamaxing, which was restricted to raids and stadium arenas. Every Pokemon has a Terra type and without having to do anything special to it. You can even find glowing terrestrializing Pokemon just hanging out in the open world. What this amounts to is a gameplay loop that I think is perfect for an open world game. Team composition has always been a large part of the fun of Pokemon games, but now not only are you building your ultimate team of six, you have to decide if you want to find a Psyduck with a Grass or Ghost or whatever other Terra type. It's a layer on top of the discovery of finding a Pokemon you like or were looking for. It means that it will still be exciting to find a Pokemon you have already registered in your decks because you also need to see what Terra type it's going to have. So not only do these types give you something to hunt for, in my preview I actually noted that the added type coverage on my team completely changed the way that I thought about composition. For example, I'm just somebody that's never really loved fire type Pokemon, but occasionally I find the need for them on my six man squad. With Terra types, you can infuse your team with types that you wouldn't normally want and bust them out when you need them. So like who needs a Charizard when I have a Belly Bolt that can terrestrialize into the fire type? In my preview, we were actually fighting a specific fire type boss and my water Pokemon got one shotted. So I sent out the ice type to Titan, but had it immediately terrestrialize into a water type to secure victory. It was awesome. So in short, terrestrializing works because it gives you something to do in the open world. It's clear, it's easy to understand. It offers more options to layer on top of battles and team composition. And I haven't even mentioned that raids return from Pokemon Sword and Shield in the form of Terra raid battles that you can take on with a group of friends. And even those raids improve over what we had before with a new turn scheme designed around having less waiting for each player and having played it myself, I could never go back to what we had before. I don't really know how they did it, but it just works and the pace is so much better. So whereas past gimmicks felt tacked on and almost like something that you could ignore completely, I'm really appreciating how terrestrializing feels infused to the overall gameplay experience of Scarlet and Violet. But that's going to do it for my overview of this phenomenon. Let me know in the comments if you are able to get past those silly hats and embrace how sick this mechanic is. And I also need recommendations. I got to know what Terra type should Belly Bolt be. What is the strat? Let me know. And for everything else in games, you're already in the right place. So just let us explain. I'm Jake, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.